Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, episode 17. Trying to stay on top of the news. There's so much stuff going on. So let me get right into some of the top stories that I'm going to tell you about a little bit today. Now, talking about the cost of batteries and battery pricing coming down, part of the driver for that are startup companies that have sprung up over the last couple of years to dibble and dabble into the battery uh, technology environment. And, and of course, I've talked a lot about this previous shows. Trevor and I talked about it back at Model 3 where there's a lot of different research R&D going on. I talk about solid state batteries and all these different chemical mixes and stuff to, to make them better and cheaper and so forth. Well, there's a new company that's popped up called Innovate and they're a battery startup company. And LG Chem thinks these guys have something cool and they're throwing some money to help them continue on with developing this. Um, and it's kind of looking at the next gen tech in the battery world. So um, Innovate Corporation is a battery startup which develops a silicon dominant uh, composite and anode, mater anode materials. Excuse me. Um, now what's uh, their tagline and what's really creating the buzz, the interest in this company is that they're saying that they believe they can bring technology, battery cell technology to enable an electric vehicle to charge in the same time as a gas car without compromise. Now, if you followed the shows, especially in the Model 3 Owners Club show when Trevor and I were doing that and, the, and continuing down the path here with me on EV Revolution, you've heard me say time and time again that eventually we'll see battery charging very close to a gas station-like experience. Because from a consumer perspective, we all get set in our ways and change is tough when we're going to do something that requires a lot more effort. So today, you know, taking your SUV or your car to the gas pumps and spending five to seven minutes putting fuel in, maybe or maybe not going in to even pay for it, just tapping out or using your debit or credit card at the pump and off you go. That's your experience. And to have to go to a charger and now sit for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour to get a fast charge, depending on the vehicle and, and parameters. Um, that's a different way of, of planning your trips. And, and a, it's a different way to, to get into a, a different rhythm that we're used to. So we are creatures of habit and change sometimes can be challenging. So uh, battery manufacturers and, and auto manufacturers can work together to get that charging experience and, and charging infrastructure providers as down as low as possible, it'll make it much more convenient for consumers to look at uh, all battery electric vehicles as a, um, a, a solid choice for them in their lifestyle. So companies like Innovate that promise that it, it sells um, will be ready for ultra fast charging in five minutes. They're also claiming that they're going to store more energy per unit of weight than the current state-of-the-art commercial lithium-ion cells. So they highlight that their batteries can be charged to 75% capacity in five minutes, uh, that they have higher energy densities than available for today's current long-range EVs, and if you can get more energy density in, in, in a safe manner and an efficient manner that lasts for a long term, then you've got a winning formula on your hands. And these guys think they have that. And they also say that you can safely charge and discharge down to minus 40 degrees C temperatures and capture more energy during regenerative braking as well. So it's very, very promising with these kind of technologies, but it's good to see because it continues to spur development. Battery industry is doing the same thing, and that's all good because it's going to help drive those costs down as well. So convenience and cost are two major catalysts to help spur EV adoption. Want to switch gears quickly to Tesla. They made the big news this week uh, over the last few days with their record quarter three uh, 2018 announcements on their earnings and their profits. I'm very excited about the positive uh, financial results. Um, for the third quarter, um, Tesla recognized a revenue of $6.82 billion. These are U.S. numbers with a profit of two ninety dollars per share. And that goes totally against what Wall Street had expected because they had expected a loss of 15 to 19 cents per share. And here is, uh, is Tesla making almost three bucks per share as a profit. Uh, Wall Street predicted 6.33 billion. So uh, Tesla did better than that prediction, but really who cares about Wall Street? I don't. Uh, they've uh, they got production up to about 5,300 Model 3s in the last week of, the, uh, of Q3. And um, the good thing about this is that they have achieved a gap net income 
uh, of uh, 312 million, which is great. Um, that's a net income, and I believe that that's profitability in income on a gross margin of more than 20%. And that 20% is kind of a magic number for Tesla from a margin perspective in order to maintain their costs because they, they put a lot of that money, if not most of it or all of it, back into the company. They reinvest it, but they need to maintain some minimum pro, um, profit uh, margin levels. And I believe 20% is that magic number, which they have exceeded on this last quarter. So great for them. Their, their total cash position increased uh, by 731 million uh, as they had a free cash flow uh, quarter. So their operating cash flow was less their CapEx uh, of, uh, to 881 million. Um, and that was despite uh, some other things going on. So that's all good news. And lastly, one of the things I wanted to point out and just if you read some of the financial results and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, if you don't understand it, don't worry. I don't know a lot about it either. But one thing that I did pick up is that they did recognize that customer deposits decreased. decreased. So they went down, they lessened a bit. Um, slightly compared to Q2 of this year, and they were down to $906 million. Uh, and that's an evaluation. So that's the, the deposit money that they've put, you know, that they received from reservations, and then they've had cancellation. So they've had to refund some of that money on a cancellation. I know that they're working through the backlog. But again, um, as I've been saying, I'm glad that they're able to start cranking these things out because they have to. The longer they make people wait, the greater the chance that people who have a reservation are going to go and get something else. But congratulations on Tesla. Good for them. And, you know, if you're waiting for a Tesla still in Europe, Asia Pack or Australia, New Zealand, well, we got some good news for you as well. I read an article just the other day, um, and again, that was from the Q3 financial call, that deliveries uh, or production of the Model 3 for regions outside of U.S. and Canada, because that's all we're getting today is, is North America, U.S. and Canada, would begin in early 2019, and Europe should start seeing significant deliveries of the Model 3 in the late February or March time frame. So let's say June. <laughs> Let's, let's be honest, folks. Tesla time frame doesn't work the way, uh, you know, your normal clock does. So if they say February, March, how about May, June, uh, spread it out another quarter. But the good news is that it looks like they're, they're getting ready and they're ramping up for European production and to meet European deliveries, which is great. Um, Asia PAC region should see it in the second quarter of the year. So I say the third quarter, so maybe after July. But um, if they see it in June, that's great. Um, and then the right-hand drive configurations, there were a couple of people that had asked Elon uh, about that. One person from Australia and one from the UK, and he said that it will be sometime that instead of being in 2020, that they've been able to bring it into the 2019 calendar year. And they expect around the mid-2019 for right-hand drive versions of the Model 3 to start to be available for delivery. So let's say instead of mid-2019, let's say Q3 just to play it safe. But that's all good news because I'm sure that there are, are th tens of thousands, if not a, a couple hundred thousand of back orders from these regions that they need to fill. Um, and I, it'll be great to see the Model 3 in people's hands being able to get, you know, there's no reason then why they couldn't get 200,000 Model 3s out next year, double what they've done this year, if they can, uh, because they have the orders there, if they could just meet those deliveries in those areas, there's uh, a lot of backlog. So good for them. Again, folks, just I always warn, be careful of Tesla uh, dates and numbers, because uh, especially the dates tend to, to be dynamic and fluid. They don't, they're not static, and uh, they try, but uh, there are things that, that can happen that uh, can just knock those out of whack. So good luck on them. Another man, uh, auto manufacturer I want to talk about briefly is Kia. And I talked about their um, uh, e-Nero last time or the e-Nero EV, but there's also the Kia Soul, which is still around. And uh, Kia has come out and they are looking to debut a long range version of that car. They're going to come out with it at the uh, LA Auto Show soon, but um, sales of it won't happen until at least the second quarter of next year. Um, not a lot of specs, but it's it's guessed that the the uh, the second generation uh, Soul, if you want to call it that, um, will probably use similar battery to packs and technologies that the uh, current Kia Nero will have. And we're guessing a 39 kilowatt hour battery pack. I don't know if you can cram a 64 into that same platform unless they change the platform. I'm not sure. It could be available if they do get the 64 kilowatt version available for that car. Um, the Soul would, would give you around 300 miles of range, uh, 485 kilometers. 
uh, with a 201 peak uh, horsepower rating, 150 kilowatt rating for uh, energy for peak power and a maximum torque of 290 foot-pounds or 392 newton meters. That's a lot for a, a soul. It's not a very big car. It's a, it's a little bit of a boxy car, so that's, that's a lot of oomph for that car to get up and go. Um, so let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that that happens. And uh, these pack numbers, by the way, EPA numbers or range numbers are actually what we're seeing. I've been watching a few of my friends in the UK Shout out to James and Kate, and shout out to uh, Nick and uh, and uh, Green Tea Leaf James as well, who have just uh, done some stuff on the uh, Hyundai Kona, which is very similar technology. Of course, uh, Hyundai and Kia are the same company, uh, owned together. Um, then they are actually reporting real life ranges of 300 miles on these cars. So that's outstanding that they're getting that for that price point and, and for that uh, type of uh, chassis. So if the Soul can get that, I think it's going to be an extremely a well-positioned vehicle depending on how it's priced because it should be a bit less than in the Nero uh, from a price point. Uh, the only negative that I saw in this article was that uh, Kia is only targeting to, to, sell, a, to sell about 20,000 units by 2020, so in a couple of years. And that, to me, is extremely disappointing. And that's what I've been saying about the Kona and the Nero as EV as well. Uh, these cars... The Kona and the Nero EV, the Nero EV is a game changer in my mind. I think it really hits the sweet spot. If the pricing is going to be right on this, it gives it gives a large market a lot of what they want. And my fear is that Kia and Hyundai are just not going to build enough of these. And I'm already hearing that there's eight to ten month wait lists for uh, the Kona itself. Uh, and the Nero as well. I've, I know some people in Canada who have already ordered the EV Nero, and they're they're looking at maybe December or into February of next year. So that's still uh, they ordered it a couple of months ago. So it's a good four or five months wait list there. But I'm hearing the wait list could be longer. So um, Kia and Hyundai, look if you if anybody there from there is listening, please you guys got to recognize that this market is huge the potential is there and i know it's costing you money i know the margins probably aren't the same as they are on a ice v version of an ionic or an ice v version of a kia soul or an equivalent ice v forte or any of the other models that uh, you guys make but this is something you've got to get into and you and the only way to get your pricing down is to start cranking these things out and tesla's you know follow their lead they've been the ones showing everybody how it's done this is a huge market, and I think that you've got a chance to really spearhead into the electric vehicle market, especially the all-electric vehicle market, with these two models specifically. I think you guys have a really good chance of opening up the market crazy, uh, more than a, you know, more than a game changer for the Leaf or some of the other, the Chevy Bolt or others that are out there. If you can just Get cranking them out. Don't do twenty thousand. Do a hundred thousand a year. Do one hundred fifty thousand a year. I mean, do whatever you can. So, keep an eye on this, folks. And if anybody's got one in order and they and you've got some lead times on these, uh, let me know. If you do hear anything more, if Kia reaches out to you about the new longer range Soul EV, let me know because I'd love to uh, to hear more about that. Now, one company I haven't talked about very much, I think Trevor and I might have talked about this like a year ago or a year and a half ago on one of the Model Three shows. Um, was Dyson and you know those guys that make the the cool vacuums right the fans and all that kind of stuff well you know it's no surprise that they've been talking about getting into the electric car game as has Apple and others for quite a long time well now they've come out uh, with some uh, statement saying that they're going to actually start building their cars in Singapore in 2021 uh, it's still kind of a mysterious project for Dyson because not really many details have been announced but um, they're going to keep the research and development of the uh, EV car in the UK, but they're going to do all the manufacturing in Singapore starting in 2020. They've invested um, 2.5 billion pounds or 3.5 billion, sorry, 3.25 billion US dollars into this Singapore plant, which uh, should uh, start receiving orders in 2021 as sales. That's when they're going to kick off sales of their not seen electric car or electric concept yet. Um, now, Dyson wants to build several electric cars. The first is going to be a low volume, maybe 10,000 units or less. Uh, to me, that means higher price. Uh, and obviously, it's a la Tesla, where you got to start building something more expensive to make that money. 
So no surprise that they're going to that they're going to do a similar type of approach to bringing their cars to market before a higher volume model will be introduced later in the decade. So um, hopefully we can see some prototypes soon because I haven't been able to find a thing on that that's that's uh, that's standing up as far as a prototype goes. But you know they've got cool designers. There's no no surprise, and they've got product uh, on the consumer side that works really well. Uh, for the most part. So uh, I have faith and they've got backing, they've got the financing behind them. So I think they're going to come out with a good product. So let's wait and see. And if anybody has any information to share on that, I'd love to hear from you. And finally, my last story today. So he's another company, folks, that I've been following for quite some time. And I believe I mentioned them on a couple of shows. It's a company called Unity. They're a Swedish based company coming out with an urban EV vehicle. Pretty cool design, different than the German Sono Motors one that I featured uh, on a video a few shows ago and I've been following as well. Well, these guys have, have set up shop in the UK. In fact, they've, they've um, set up shop in the Silverstone Raceway area. There's a, there's a high-tech type of complex in the automotive area around the racetrack. So they set up shop there um, and uh, at Silverstone Park. And the facility that they have in the UK is going to be used to produce the Unity One electric car. And that's a pretty big deal to actually start producing these cars in the UK. And they just came out with this announcement earlier this week. Um, I thank the Unity folks for inviting me to come out to Silverstone for this press announcement and to get some coverage. But unfortunately, I just couldn't uh, fly, drop everything and fly to England for two days and come back. Um, I need a bit more time. So hopefully I will see these guys on another occasion and get some footage. Um, now they are uh, obviously it's going to be their R&D and design center they still are going to have a lot of stuff based in Sweden um, but this is a pilot facility that uh, it will be operational by 2020 and then uh, they um, on plan to unveil, unveil their production model in late 2019 so in about a year from now um, they've got uh, pre-order customers throughout northern Europe uh, after as well so I think they've got a worldwide pre-order if I'm not mistaken and, but we're going to focus on Northern Europe as far as initial deliveries go and the UK. And they've also announced a limited equity crowdfunding campaign through a UK-based Crowdcube, if it's called. Um, so to give uh, investors an opportunity to own shares in the company. So if you're interested, uh, you can check them out. Have a look. I certainly encourage you to do that. I don't own any shares today in Unity. Um, I'm just reporting on them. But I think that uh, it's a pr pretty cool car. It's definitely an urban-ish vehicle to zip in and out of urban centers, uh, which obviously for Europe is a good thing in all the big cities that they have. So good luck on Unity. And I hope to meet up with them at some point and be able to provide proper coverage and do an impressions overview of the car. Well, that's it for this episode 17 of the EV Revolution show. Um, again, I haven't really received much mail. Um, it's been more pointed questions on something that I've talked about and asking for a response or clarification on something. So if you have something that you want to ask that is more beneficial to the general, to everybody else, please send me an email. You can do that at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to send me an audio uh, message or a video, uh, I'll put it up on the show, please. I'd love to do that. Um, you can follow me on Twitter if you're not already, at EVRevShow is my Twitter uh, stuff. And uh, please follow me on that and uh, send me comments and feedback on that. Of course, if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, I hope you do by clicking the subscribe um, button. And also click that bell because you'll get notification when a new show is pushed up automatically. If you're not aware, I am continuing on with the EV Revolution audio podcast. I've got four or five of them now. I'm losing track of numbers, folks, when you get older. Um, and I've got audio podcasts via iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and now Spotify, of course, you can get those. And if you're having challenges getting them, finding them, let me know because I've been able to find them. Uh, I'm going to actually record my next audio podcast this upcoming weekend and hopefully have it out shortly after and it should be interesting. And if uh, you're con interested in supporting me through Patreon, if you're not familiar with what Patreon is, you can go to their website at www.patreon.com. And if you forward slash EV Revolution Show, that'll take you to my page where you could support me if you'd like to through any donations on Patreon. Uh, even a dollar a month is is uh, helps. Every, every little bit helps me, folks, uh, to try to continue to do what I do. Um, as I keep mentioning, there's a lot of traveling that I, uh, I'm going to want to do. I'll definitely be going back to fully charged next year in England in June to cover that. Uh, it'll be a three-day uh, show next year. So any little bit helps uh, helps me to defer some of my costs in productions and equipment and so forth. And on that note, that's it again for this 
uh, edition of the EV Revolution show. I thank you very much for tuning in to watch. And as always, we'll see you next time and stay safe. Thank you.